Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about all of my beach fishing gear. I've been getting a lot of questions about my gear in the past few videos, so we decided let's make a dedicated video to show you exactly what I like to bring. What are some of my essential things, the brands that I like to use, and the different kinds of tools that I like to bring with me. I just got to the beach, we're at our spot. I'm gonna unload my gear and then we can get into it. So the first thing I reach for is my sand spikes so that I can put my rods down. Sand spikes and my rubber mallet. I always bring these. And these sand spikes are awesome. They're called the sea striker ones. There's plenty of good ones out there but what I look for is a strong stainless steel, good material, sturdy material, uh, tall enough that it won't, my rods won't sit so low in the ground. It's really important to have a good, strong sand spike. And believe me, I have tried a lot of different sand spikes. A lot of them have failed me. But this has been good. Next, I bring my rods down. And uh, I'll take them all down and put them into our sand spikes. I bring three rods usually, varying lengths. The first one is a 10-footer. This is my 10-foot Phoenix Black Diamond Surf Rod. This is my go-to rod, I love this one. But this one doesn't necessarily cast into the second trough. This is my, my close shot rod. It's a, it's a great little rod that can throw six, up to six ounces, um, medium heavy, I have it with my Shimano Stella. And this is the 5,000 size. And like I said, I'm not casting too far out with this, so I don't need such a huge reel. 5,000 works great for the first drop. A lot of people have been saying, I have an eight foot rod, I have a nine foot rod. Is that bad for surf fishing? No, it's perfectly fine. If you can cast it to the first drop, you're good. There's no need to have anything super special. It's just nice to have something that, that is built for the job. Next thing I wanna show you, is the reel cover. This is a Shimano reel cover on here that I really like. It helps protect against like sand and salt spray and just when I'm having them, when I have it just sitting around and I'm not fishing. Instead of having to break everything down and, and put everything away, I can just slap this on. And with this on, this is a neoprene cover. It, it, it's less damaging to the reel. I've got 30 pound braid on here. The braid that I like to use is called Power Pro, uh, the shock leader that I have on here is 40 pounds. A shock leader is what you tie on so that you don't cut your finger when you cast, you don't snap a heavy weight when you cast. It, it provides stretch so when you catch big fish, it'll give it a little bit of a, a little more stretch so it doesn't snap your braid. It's also, I think, more uh, abrasive resistant than braid, braid will just snap. Rod number two I like to bring, and I've got another case on here. My 12 foot black diamond rod. This can throw three to 10 ounces. Um, this is my, my big fish rod. I use this to throw big weights and big baits. This is meant to cast really far. Uh, this is called a Phoenix black diamond as well. All three of my rods are Phoenix black diamonds um, because I like the price point. They're great for what they are and they, they're very sensitive and they're very strong. So I've got this on a Saragossa SW8000 sized. And since I'm casting this further out to the second trough, I, up, I upgraded the size. So that smaller one is a smaller reel because I'm not casting as far. This, I've got 20 pound monofilament on the whole thing. Um, and I have 20 pound monofilament on here be, instead of braid because I'm fishing in, a, I'm fishing in uh, North Carolina and some of these spots that I like to fish, there's a lot of other fishermen there. Um, when braid and monofilament cross each other, braid will cut the monofilament. So people put on monofilament instead of braid so if they get tangled, they don't get snapped. 
But I also, I've been enjoying using mono on the beach because I feel like it gives a more stretch when you're fighting a fish. And it gives it a, a better feeling of security when I'm using this. So that's rod number two. Rod number three is a 13 foot rod. Um, but I typically have a big reel on here. I've been here for a little bit and actually one of my reels broke. I was using my pen and that broke on me. So I'm using my backup rod, my backup reel now, which is the Saragossa uh, SW5000. If I had a choice, I would probably upgrade the size to this to maybe an 8000 and have the same setup as that other one. Um, but again, I'm using the shock leader monofilament. It doesn't matter what brand, just pick one and use it. But a shock leader is a must. Now, before I go fishing, I get into my waders. And um, that's just so I can step out a little bit further into the surf and cast a little bit farther. Let's get them on. It's actually getting pretty hot. I'm gonna have to take my wind jacket off. But I'm, I always have layers when I'm fishing on the beach because it, weather can change in a second. And bringing a, a wind jacket or a rain jacket is really a big help. Okay, here are my waders. Well, here are Aaron's are waders. My waders. We have the same waders. And we got them from Academy. They're called the Magellan, Magellan um, what are they called? Magproof. Here's what they are. What do you like about these? I like these because it has a pocket on the inside. I can put my cell phone. Here, I'm gonna put it on right now. Aaron, you wanna get your waders on? Yeah. Good. They're really comfortable. It's, it's good to wear not only uh, because it's waterproof, but it's also windproof. Yeah. So when it's really high winds or it's really cold, this really helps block out the coldness. Okay. I need my boots. Okay, so now I don't have feet on here. These are just the neoprene socks. I actually have these Hodgman neoprene shoes that I got from Amazon. They're okay. I'm sure there's better ones out there, but I got them for cheap. My main issue is the zipper here. No, this is your shoe, Aaron. You're trying to put on my shoe. See, tiny. The zipper gets stuck. We just ordered these shoes a couple sizes up from our regular shoe size. Yep. But yeah, the zipper is kind of... It gets jammed, look. Yeah, because of the sand. You just gotta rinse it out with water and it's okay. Now I'm all weighted up, so it's actually kind of hot right now, but typically I would wear something like this on a cold, windy, on a cold slash uh, fall, spring morning. I would definitely be in my waders. It just happens to be the middle of a day on a sunny day. So I'm actually gonna just go, I can just go in shorts. Shorts and bare feet works just fine. Yeah. You wanna do that? Yeah, let's do that instead. It's kinda hot. <laughs> I didn't think it would be so hot today. No. All right, shorts it is. Ta-da! <laughs> and that's way better. Yeah, way better. I'm a lot less hot now. Let's get fishing. Yeah. I've got this really cool uh, beach wagon here that can be detached from our hitch so that I have access to my bed. And I really like that about it. Now let's get into uh, what kind of sinkers I like to use, what kind of uh, bait I like to use. Here's my fishing box right here. So I keep all my sinkers in a in a tub like this so I don't get sand everywhere. And I use these Sputnik sinkers that I really like. Sputnik sinkers are great. And you can find them at any tackle shop. Get my bait box out. I also really like to bring um, these box, these bait boxes because I can put all my bait inside these hard boxes without getting uh, waterlogged or without getting like, like all crushed up from your cooler and stuff like that. Between the Shrimpy Bit Starter Kit and that bait box that I have over there, um, these work really well to hold my baits. This is my leader line bag where I keep all my leader lines, my crimping tools. In my leader bag, I've got an assortment of different uh, weights. This one is 50 pound, 30 pound, 
100 pound for bigger fish. It's just nice to have leader line because that's what I tie all my own rigs with. Um, and I don't buy any store, store tied rigs. I've got our special salt mixture here. So anytime, um, anytime I catch anything fresh, I want to salt it down for bait, salt it down. Uh, this, is, this is great to use. I keep it in this reusable Ziploc here. Okay, what else is in my bag? Here's my rig tying bag. My box that I've got all these beads in here. You can order these on Amazon, but there's a lot of different sources you can get beads from. And I have these snap swivels right here that are really helpful. Uh, those are the bottoms of my rigs. The Tournament Mutu Light Inline Circles. These are great. Owners. I mean, you can keep things pretty simple by just getting hooks and leader line and sinkers and, you know, this is a completely different kind of fishing uh, as compared to, like, if you were to bring a bunch of lures like this. You know, these will all work too, but I love using bait. Okay, so now let's, let's talk about setting up our lines now. Okay, so I'm going to need my sinker box for this. And then I usually get a bucket of water so I can wash my hands. That water is cold. Now I got a cutting board right here. It's just a block of wood. Our baits. Fresh mullet. Now let's set up our rods. Now I'll typically just throw one rod at first. Just to see if anything's biting. If things are biting, then I'll start getting more out. But I want to conserve on bait and energy. So I've got a high-low rig tied on here. And the difference between a high-low rig and a fish finder rig is where that sinker sits. The sinker on a high-low rig is at the bottom. A fish finder rig, the sinker is before the swivel, meaning you've got hooks at the bottom, okay? So this is a high-low rig I tied with the mortician rig, and if you don't know how to tie this, I teach how to tie this in a lot of videos, and also on our website, hayskipperfishing.com. But I like to use just monofilament, honestly. It works just fine for me. I can't really tell the difference between monofilament and fluorocarbon. Um, and then I use two to three-aught sized owner circle hooks. I love to use owner. Gamagatsu is a second, but I love owner. This is a 150 pound swivel down here, 150 pound swivel up here. And now for this 10 foot rod, I'm gonna put a three ouncer on it, a three ounce Sputnik. Because the waves aren't too crazy, I don't really need that big of a heavy weight. Three ounce works just fine. Okay, for this bait, I'm gonna put on some of our clams right here. These are our salted clams. And they're very clean to use. I like them because they're really mesh free as compared to the mullet. Uh, but I cut the clams in half and then I put a piece of mullet on there. Actually, the bottom one, I'm just gonna do just straight up clam. This is not for sale yet, but it will be soon. I'm working on perfecting the recipe. So now I'm gonna cut up this mullet and now I can put it on. So this is an, it's called an owner Mutu Light Circle Hook, Tournament Circle Hook. That's the particular brand I'm using. I've been using it a lot and I love it. And then I'll put a piece of clam on like that. Give my hands a quick rinse so I don't get slime all over my reel. This one's going in the first drop. Okay, let's see if there's any activity with this one. If I catch anything, then uh, then I'll start, I'll tie up another one. There. Just, just missed one. I'm already tempted to throw 
throw out another rod. This one's on a bike just now while Aaron was filming. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing with another rod. And you know what? I'll throw out that big rod. This one gets a big bait and a big sinker. That big hook rod, that big fish rod I just threw out is a six sized hook. This is a smaller sized big hook. Sometimes I use up to size 10. That's a big one too. Whoa, it's kicking in my face. Wow. Look at that. That was really close in. That was my first rod. Really close in. I basically just lofted it out there. We've got enough bluefish, so we don't need to eat this. We're gonna let them go. So we've been camping for many days at this point, and I've been catching a lot of fish, so I really don't need to keep keeping all these fish. Some people wonder, what do you do with all the fish that you catch? Why do you keep keeping them? I literally eat them all. I don't bring steaks and fancy meats. I just rely on catching these fish and eating them. So that's what I do with my fish. They don't go to waste. If I don't eat them, I bring them to my grandma. Trust me, nothing goes to waste. Since I got a big blue, I don't want it to snap my line, so I actually have a, uh, a high-low rig tied with the T-knot here, and it's attached to a uh, long shanked hook, and this is meant for bluefish. This is what I use instead of steel leaders to catch my bluefish. Now, if you want to learn how to tie this rig, I teach exactly how to tie this T-knot right here um, in one of our eBooks on our website, hayskipperfishing.com. This is a pretty advanced knot, uh, but I, I have really great illustrations and pictures to show you how to tie it. Two at a time. Okay, I'm gonna let mine go. Yeah, I got Woo! Woo!
Oh, I see a lot of bait fish in here. Oh, another blue fish. Dang. These are nice chunkers too. Yeah. And that's why we use a circle hunt. Look at this. This is so you don't kill everything that you catch. This is very minimal damage. For bait for this big rod, I'm gonna put a piece of mullet like this, and also a big old chunk of clam like this. Fold it in half. There we go. That's a nice presentation right there. This one feels different. Look, feel this one. This one, it feels different. This one feels different. Are you, are you just tricking me? No, I'm not. I'm not. Why does it feel different? Okay, be careful. It's, it's a little bit pricklier. Um, this one's in ultimate defense mode right now. Ultimate. Defense. Ultimate defense mode. Okay, bring it a little closer. <laughs> so this is like as puffed up as can possibly get right now, and this is so that. Fish can't just engulf it. It's gonna try and have to eat. It's gonna have to eat a balloon, pretty much. <laughs> Not a good snack. What does it feel like, Emma? It feels like um, like a hairbrush, but uh, spiky. A spiky hairbrush. Spiky hairbrush, like, like one of those boar bristles. Kind of like Velcro. Oh yeah, it's like Velcro. Oh, he's oozing something. <laughs> you let it go. Yeah. You want to let it go? Ah, I don't know how. Give it a little light toss. Okay. Light toss.
<laughs> Look at that perfect hook set too. Good job. Right here on the bottom lip. Oh, you still have bait. Good job, Aaron. <laughs> Give it a kiss. No, it's too sharp. That's a whiting. Hello. That's a good one too. Very good one. A nice big one. One that makes me want to keep it. Whoa, look at the markings on it. It's very black. <laughs> I put some shrimp on it. I want to see the markings. Whoa, look at that fin up top. There we have it, another amazing fishing day at the beach. I really love the beach because you're always surprised. You don't know what you're gonna catch and um, there's always at least one big surprise for me every time I go to the beach. Um, today ended up being a bunch of nice sized blues. That's awesome, I love catching bluefish. And I'm lucky that I have all my gear situated and I've got everything that I need. Hopefully this gear guide can help you prepare and get ready for your next trip to the beach. Maybe it'll save you some hassle in the future. Here at Hay Skipper, we want to help you guys get on fish and we want to make it easy for you to learn how to do any kind of fishing. We do videos like this, but we also write a lot of ebooks and online books that you can read on our website, hayskipperfishing.com. If you want to learn more about fishing, check out our website. I'll also include links to all the products that I like to use in the description below. But let me know how you like this kind of video because in the future I might do more. The bait today was mullet, and the, the salted clams, those two worked really well together in, in combination. Uh, but I was catching fish just on the clams too. Um, some days all they want is shrimp. Some days all they want is clam. Some days all they want is mullet. You gotta have multiple different kinds of baits. That's how you have a good successful day at fishing. Uh, we, have, we have two different kinds of, of uh, salted baits right now. A third to come very soon. Um, and it's just really nice to bring a variety of these salted baits because you never know what they want to hit. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next week.